Welcome to the channel, people. Today I have eight vintage inspired DIYs for you. Four you can find right here on my channel, and the other four you're going to be able to find at Sammy from Unicorn Dust Design Channel as part of her Spotlight Saturday series. Let's jump into it. For our vintage book decor, we're going to need two books, and I picked these up from Dollar Tree, and one is slightly bigger than the other one. You can use three books if you want, but I'm just using two for this. These are fairly big, and then I'm going to glue them together using wood glue for this process and we're gonna let this dry before we do anything else to it while this is drying we're gonna need to bring out our molds now these are prima designs please mind all the crusty bits in there these things have seen better days and I'm being lazy and didn't feel like cleaning it out. This is my favorite paper clay that I like to use. For those of you who have carpal tunnel, I've talked about this all the time. I use this particular clay because it is easy to mold. Here is me even showing you this stuff is getting a little crusty bits everywhere. <laughs> it's kind of old. So I'm just adding some water to it, rolling it back up in my hand over and over again so I can press it down in this mold and it brought it right back to life. And it was really easy to work with even when it was starting to go old. I, I obviously need to get more clay. But it worked people. It worked a little bit of water, you know, add to your clay and everything be okay. <laughs> For the spines of the books, I always like to do two different pieces so this way it just makes each book look a little bit unique in your stack if you want to do the same spine you go right ahead but i'm using two different molds for this part and then i'm attaching them with wood glue i like to use wood glue when i'm doing this i use this particular clay on my furniture as well and i just feel like the bond holds really well with this particular clay and wood glue even with the books because I've made a bunch of book decor as well. So I just continue using this method. And I think there's even a book DIY video where I make a bunch of ideas <laughs> in one video. I will see if I can find them and also put that in the description box for anyone that's interested to watch it. Here comes the not so fun part about this. Now you are forced to let these pieces dry and by no means 30 minutes to an hour. You really need to let them dry three to six hours to make sure that these clay pieces are completely dry because you're applying them as they are still wet and the wood glue. Once your piece is completely dry, you're gonna wanna take whatever color paint that you want. I like to use chalk paints when I'm doing this and I'm using Waverly's plaster and covering the entire set of both books. And this took me two and a half coats. Really the half was just me kind of going back and covering in little spots that didn't fill in. And then we're gonna just take some extra little bits and put in the ends. Now for this part, I was completely not paying attention to how much glue I should or should not have been putting on here. What in the world? Ah! Oh no. Mm. Now that we've averted that crisis, so I just taking these pieces are all from Dollar Tree and adding to the ends of the books just to give the spine a little something different. And I had these little metal pieces. It's like a frame and bunch of key pieces that I picked up from Hobby Lobby along with this beautiful thick decorative paper that we are about to decoupage onto the top cover of this book. Now, if you're new to my content, let me just tell you, I decoupage everything I can decoupage. <laughs> and this paper is so thick. So when you're using thick paper like this, it can be a challenge. But the first thing is to make sure you map out your area that you're purposefully placing your paper. So that's what I did. And then I made sure to cut out where we are putting our little frame because we don't want to just lay our frame right on top of the paper. I mean, you can I'm not going to do that. We're going to cut a little window out and then set it in there. So it looks like our little frame and our key is sitting on the book. And then this is kind of just around the book. Now it has been my experience, people, that less is more when it comes to decoupaging. <laughs> However, 
Don't less is more this paper. More is more with this paper. One, it has grooves in it, so you got to get the Mod Podge in there. And two, it's extra thick, so if you're not making sure that it is in all those parts, you're going to get bubbles. So instead of putting the Mod Podge on the book, I decided to do the entire back of the paper and then use my sponge to really push out any extra excess. And, and that's another reason I love the sponge because the sponge grabs any extra Mod Podge. It doesn't get on me. And it's so sad. I'm like down to the last bit of my Gorilla Glue gel. This is my go-to stuff. I just love this stuff. But I'm using that to attach our little metal piece. Do not use hot glue attaching metal things, it will end up popping off down the road. Just listen to me. I have your back, okay? Have your back. Use some Gorilla Glue Gel or some E6000, okay? Use that instead. Since everything is all dry, we're just going to go in and touch up all the shinies because we do not want the shiny parts of what we just attached to come through in any way, shape, or form. So I'm just taking the same exact paint that I put on the book and covering up everything. And then we're going to grab some color and grab us a little sponge. And we're going to go over top of the book gently, putting some color in here just to add a little something, something. You wanna skip this part and just leave the book like it is. It's stunning just as it is. You go right ahead. I've had some people in the comments tell me I got a little extra sometimes and to stop layering. Bless y'all but I'm extra and this is my project. You DIY your stuff the way you want, okay? I'm here for inspiration and I gotta let my own inspiration flow and this is how I'm going with this. I'm adding the bright colors first and this is so once I layer the vintage look on top of it, those bright colors kind of pop through that vintage aspect. And for that, I'm starting with a little bit of Waverly's Antique Wax not heavy, just a tiny bit and going around some of the edges on the book and some of the raised spots. Then I'm taking some of Dixie Belle's black gilding wax, rubbing a little bit on my finger and then going over some of the areas to just add like a dirt, really dirt looking piece. Like this book stack has been sitting in the back of a library somewhere. And I had to glam it up just a smidge with a little bit of gold gilding wax. If you do not have these pieces, some metallic paints will work fine as well for the gold or if you wanna add silver. And that's gonna be it for this one. I just want to thank Sammy for including me in her Spotlight Saturday series. She is truly an amazing friend to me and an inspiration to the DIY community as a whole. If you're interested in checking out her channel, the link is in the description box as well as the link to the video for my other four DIYs. For this project, you're going to need a hurricane vase from Dollar Tree and a box to tumbling tower blocks. We are creating a very vintage little tumbling block well. And this might not be a unique tumbling tower block idea, but I guarantee you haven't seen a vintage well done like this in the tumbling tower blocks. <laughs> so here we go. I'm all about that DIY inspiration and ideas and the entertainment. Let's not forget about that. Now for the box. I'm going to do my typical wood glue and hot glue. This way we get a long lasting hold and a good quick hold. And I'm about to show you just how well this works. Oh no. What did I do? Oh no. How do I get you out of here? Ooh, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Come on, you mother. Well can't say I didn't get a tight bond on it. Oh yeah, okay, there we go. <laughs> Oops. For the sake of not breaking our hurricane vase, I decided to continue building our little well up without it in the middle. Then I'm taking a single tumbling tower block and placing it in the middle of this vice grip and bringing in the drill bits. People be gentle when you are putting a hole through this sucker so you don't split the little tumbling tower block. It is fragile, okay? Just be gentle, be easy. 
this is definitely the safest way to drill a hole through one of these and once you're finished we're going to use this to attach our little pole wood piece that goes through the top for a well you know that the bucket goes on we're not really making a bucket but you guys are picking up what i'm putting down at the end of the day our well took nine tumbling tower blocks height wise before i decided to call it quits you can make it as high as you want but i was fine with nine also i was not planning that the sides would be uneven like they are so I had to kind of create my own base to build up the sides of the well and took one tumbling block and then another one and popped it out just a little bit so there was like a little lip and I did the same thing on the other side so this way I could take two tumbling blocks and stand them straight up and the one at the very top I left with the hole so we could put our little wood piece see these little gems so I put our little dowel I'm using a dowel but in my mind it's like a branch or something I don't know why but this is just where I'm going with this okay follow me flow with me people this next part is important okay make sure that you got your little dowel or your little wood piece in there before you attach this so this way it goes through seamlessly if you do not you don't know where that dowel is going to end up trying to go and it's going to be a hot mess and make you have to redo things so learn from me but ta-da here is what it's going to look like when it's in its final built form i was really happy with how this piece turned out but of course we're not done we're going to spray paint this sucker up with some linen white rust-oleum chalked paint and for my asmr lovers This took me several coats. Don't let the transition fool you, okay? Like three coats, about three hours of drying, and voila, we are done. Now, Dollar Tree has some metal lace, and I finally found my bag. <laughs> I don't know what happened to it, but it was a mess, and then I cleaned up, and then I found some things. So I'm taking some of this metal lace and putting it on the edges of the outside of our tower I, I still don't know I don't have a name for these still don't have one but we're cutting them we're cutting them at the very top where it starts to turn over with my metal cut and shears that I picked up from Hobby Lobby and then I'm going to place them perfectly so the hole that I drilled is exactly over the spot that I'm going to clip out so we still have no problem sliding our dowel in and out of this well just be careful people to not nip a tip of anything i am not responsible for your injuries okay cut at your own risk and here's me just showing you that this actually leaves just enough space for that hole perfect a little tip if you go to do something like this with the metal lace take the metal lace line it up exactly next to the same exact spots that you cut in the metal lace and it will line up perfectly on whatever project you're doing. See how I'm kind of just putting them next, making sure I cut them in the exact spaces and it went flawlessly, which is, you know, a shocker because nothing really ever does go flawlessly for me, but that worked out just great. I then took a little bit of Waverly's antique wax to, you know, color our little tree branch. Cause in my mind, this is a tree branch that is going through our well here. And it also gives it a little bit of a contrast. Then I'm taking some of it, putting a little on my finger and just going around the edges of this to make it look like little pieces of, you know, weathered wood. I recently did a painter stick DIY video and that joint did really well and I had another idea. So I'm like, we're going to create us a little vintage fence decor piece using several of these smaller paint sticks. And we're going to just nip the tip off the top. I know what you're thinking. People are like, I do not like the way the top of these look, period. Just I cut them off. Easiest way, miter saw. Here, I thought let's give it a go and i regretted it instantly i was like oh why did i bring out these minor cutting shears but i was already in it at this point 
because I figured I'm just going to muster through it and decided to get out my cutting shears, my wire cutting shears, because they helped to get the extra wood that was left off in the process of still torturing myself with the miter shears. <laughs> so at the end of the day, use, use, you know, a little hand saw or use a miter saw. It just, it works better. Just, it, it just does. Once you have them cut to the size that you want, then we're just going to put them a good distance away from one another for, I'm using four of them, four apart. And then we're gonna take two more, measure at the top where you want. I'm gonna leave a little excess on each side and then one at the bottom. Once we're happy with that, we're just gonna kind of nip the edges off of our little fences, just to kind of give it, you know, that little fence appeal. And the shears are perfect for this job. They actually do that very easy and very well. So use them for that part. You don't wanna use them for the other part. You know, you've seen what happened to me, people, come on. And then I'm taking some wood glue and some hot glue and attaching our sideways sticks. So it looks like a fence. If you wanna add in some staples, have at it, get them bonds in there, make sure this is nice and tight. If you're a reseller like I am, I recommend putting staples in the back just to be safe. Once your project's dry, then we're gonna paint it whatever color you want. I'm just using Waverly's white chalk paint here and then let that dry and bring in our napkin. Who's tired of me decoupaging everything? I don't really care if you are. I'm just kidding, I love you guys, but you know I decoupage, love decoupage. This napkin is not for sale yet on my website. It will be, I have this and a couple other new ones that are gonna be in bundle kits soon. So keep an eye out for that. For those of you that are always interested in using the products I use in my videos with my napkins. I only wanted the butterflies out of the napkins. So I purposefully ripped them in those spots and then took those two sneaky layers off. And then I'm just doing a light layer of Mod Podge and putting them at the very bottom of our fence. Well, not the very bottom, but you know, the bottom, bottom before the piece and the bot. you guys know what I'm saying. And just to be clear, because I do have people ask this often, I always put a layer of whatever sealer I'm using to decoupage at the time over the project once it's completely dry. I might not always show it, but that's because YouTube has a retention thing. And if people are not sticking in the video the whole way, I have to make adjustments. So sometimes I just cut that out. I sanded the extra off once this was dry and then took a little bit of antique Waverly wax to, you know, get that old vintage look going just in certain little spots. I didn't put it everywhere. And then I had this little galvanized piece from Dollar Tree use my Gorilla Glue gel and some hot glue for a quick instant bond. Remember, don't just use hot glue. It will end up popping off. You need something that is gonna give you that long lasting bond. And then add some foils. This wood ring centerpiece is super easy. We're gonna use these wood rings from Dollar Tree and these little wood slice pieces I picked up from Hobby Lobby. Now, if you're not following my Brows with Brandy each week, you can also pick up cheap budget friendly ones from Michaels and Walmart. Once you put your wood glue down in the very center, you're gonna to wanna to bring in the staple gun. Sometimes I get a little wild and I'll put like three, four staples in here, but for this particular project, I just put two. And then I let this dry for about 30 minutes just to make sure that the ring wasn't gonna pop right off there as soon as I started painting it. The staples I use are kind of shallow, so sometimes they will pop out when I do particular projects, so I'll let them dry extra. I wanna give this a weathered look, so I'm taking Dixie Belle's French linen and going over it, not the entire piece and leaving a little bit of that wood pop through and then I'm just dry brushing with some of Dixie Belle's cotton white. To finish it off with a little bit of that vintage touch, I'm taking this gold gilding wax and going completely around the ring on both sides and a little bit on the bottom. And that's gonna be it for this one. Add your florals as you want.
Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, people. I hope you got some learning and entertainment out of the video. And if you want to see my other four vintage DIYs, don't forget to check out Sammy's channel for her Spotlight Saturday series. She has new creators coming in every single week for the next month. Until next time.